Hi there, friend. I pray you are well today. Do you know how greatly loved you are today? Man, I love telling you guys this. God loves you and is proud of you and is proud to be your Heavenly Father. I hope you know that. So we've been talking about this introductions. We've introduced you to God. I've introduced you to God and to Jesus. Today I want to introduce you to the Holy Spirit. I don't need to introduce you to Him because He's already in you, but I want to introduce you to the concept of the Holy Spirit. And there's a lot here, and I'm just going to scratch the surface, so this takes time. Bear with me. So, um, the Bible says that God exists in a three-form unity. That's a bit hard to understand, but He exists simultaneously as God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. If you've been in church, you've heard this referred to as the Holy Trinity. It's a biblical concept. It's very real. It's a bit mystical, but it's very much a biblical concept. Genesis 1.1, which I talked to you about, I guess, yesterday, talking about God the Father. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form, verse 2, and said, verse 2 says, and void, earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. We'll introduce right there in the second verse of the Bible, the Holy Spirit. So, the Holy Spirit tends to be the active agent, the activity producing, working side of God. We have fruits of the Spirit in the New Testament. We have gifts of the Spirit in the New Testament. We have the Spirit here, there with God, brooding over His creation, waiting for the next instruction of what is to happen. And <clears throat> if there is an active or, or productive um, ends producing side of the Father, it is the Holy Spirit. He is the Holy Spirit. The Genesis text tells us that the Holy Spirit is eternal, that He's powerful, that He's holy, and that He's divine. So all those characteristics are just like God, right? He's eternal, He's powerful, He's holy, and He's divine. He's like God. So He's the essence, if you will, of God. He's the Spirit of God. Now Jesus talked about the Holy Spirit in the New Testament on multiple occasions. And he said in John chapter 14, verse 16, he said, I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper, another of the same kind, is the idea, that he'll be with you forever, the spirit of truth, Jesus called him. And he said, I will not leave you as orphans, I will come to you. Well, we believe that was referenced when the Holy Spirit was poured out to the church in Acts chapter 2. So when you became a Christian, let me make this real practical for you. When you became a Christian, God moved into you. He took up residence in your spirit. And the way, the means by which he did that was through his spirit, the Holy Spirit. So you are a temple. You're a residence. You're um, a holy place where God, in fact, lives in the form of his Holy Spirit. God the Father, God the Son who came and died for you, God the Spirit is the agent God sent to you to do his works, to bear fruit in you, and to make you holy and to secure you and take you into heaven when it's the appropriate time. So you're a receptacle, if you will. You're a keeper of the Holy Spirit, which makes you holy. That's why the Bible calls Christians saints, not just the heroes. He calls the everyday ordinary Christians like you and me saints, holy, hagios, holy ones, because the Holy Spirit is in us. So the Holy Spirit is the active, personal, intimate, in you side of God that moved into you irreversibly when you became a Christian. He sealed you, he protected you, he adopted you, he made all those things possible. The Holy Spirit is a person. He is not an it. You know, the King James Bible called the Holy Spirit the Holy Ghost. In 1611, the word ghost meant something different than it does now. And um, we don't call the Holy Spirit an it at all because he is not a thing, an inanimate object. He is a person. He's the person of Jesus in you. He's also personal. You can have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. You can talk to the Holy Spirit. He will talk to you. He will comfort you. He will woo you and he will guide you. He's intimate. He's very much a part of you. He's not distant at all. And he's very real. And you'll get to know him. So as you've grown in your Christian faith these last few days, weeks, months, whatever, as you felt these stirrings, these wooings, these, these wrestlings in your spirit, that was the Holy Spirit of God 
talking to you and wooing you? If you have felt joy as you became a Christian, have you felt emotion over what's happened to you? That's all the Holy Spirit working in you. So, friend, you are now acquainted with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. How good is that? You're, you're, you're holy ground because God's Spirit, which you promised, lives in you. More tomorrow. Lord, thanks to my friend here. Bless him today in Jesus' name. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Amen.